Hey everyone, I am here on the Rogue River Trail heading eastbound. I am doing my first solo hike and I will be going from Foster Bar 40 some miles to Grave Creek Trailhead. Let's get going. This isn't the first time I've hiked the Rogue River Trail. In fact, this was one of my training hikes I did getting ready for the PCT, but this will be my first time solo hiking. Part of the reason I'm doing it here is because I wanted to do it on a trail I was familiar with, and I do a lot of training hikes on sections of this trail. There are a lot of ways you can go about doing this. It's a 40 mile-ish hike from Grave Creek just outside of Grants Pass down to Foster Bar, which is up the river from Gold Beach. Um, normally, what people do is they will pay one of the local rafting companies to shuttle their vehicle, and they'll drop it off at like Grave Creek or either side, and then the shuttle company will go pick it up, store it at their location, and then when you tell them you're ready to go, they will have it delivered to the other trailhead. That's not too bad. When Bear King Up Road is open, it's only like $80 to $100, I think. But the problem is this time of year, it's closed due to the snow. So it's closer to $250 to have them shuttle it up. That said, um, there are other ways you can do it too. You can do what Jennifer and I did. And I dropped her off at Grave Creek and she hiked with a group out to Foster Bar. Then I started at Foster Bar and she's gonna take the car back and she'll come get me when uh, I'm done. I kind of think that uh, mid to late April is the perfect time to come out here and do this trail. While it's uh, not blazing hot, it's still pretty warm. You've got all the flowers that are starting to bud out and it's still early enough in the season that it's a bit quieter than uh, you'd get if you did it during the peak time of the summer. You're gonna find that the west side of the trail actually kind of goes more into the forest than along the river. And in a way it's good and bad. I mean, yeah, you don't get the you don't get the views of the river and everything, but at the same time, you're under shade, lots of cover, gives you a little bit of relief from the heat. There's a lot of ways that people can do this trail. I've seen people trail run out and back in a day. Crazy. I mean, you've got your traditional backpacking route. I've seen people go from lodge to lodge just carrying a small pack and not having to worry about camping or carrying food. But I think by far the most interesting approach to doing this is one I only recently heard of. And that is to use one of the rafting companies and raft all the way down the river throw your backpack on and backpack your way back. 
I actually kind of want to make it my goal to do that sometime. Oh, that's like an air conditioner. Stop for some water and a snack, and hopefully my next stop will be uh, Paradise Lodge in about seven miles. And then from there, maybe another one or two, and I'm gonna start looking for a place to camp for the night. Well, the trail itself really isn't that bad, and it's not sketchy at all. I could see how if you had a fear of heights that uh, this trail might bother you in spots. There are spots where you're dangling up above the river pretty high, but the views are great. Made it to Paradise Lodge, about a third of the way done. I think I'm gonna shoot for another couple miles and call it a night. First, I think I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit, take a break. Well, I guess I'm not stopping at Paradise Lodge. Looks like it's closed to anything but overnight camping, so, uh, or overnight reservations. So I guess I'm gonna find some place to have a sit and then head on back down the trail some more. This looks like a good place to call it a night. I believe I am on North Gleason Bar. Um, it is just slightly uh, west or east of Paradise Lodge. Uh, it's a nice looking little place. And I think I've, I've done pretty good for tonight. I've done about 14, 14 and a half miles. Uh, my goal was to get through the trail in three days, so I don't want to push it too hard and I'll be done in two. But anyway, I'm gonna get set up for the night and start dinner. Well, that was probably the noisiest campsite I've ever had last night. That includes actually like setting up right in the middle of a game trail. Had uh, squawks and weird noises all night long. I don't know if part of that is just because I was out here camping solo and this is like the first time I've done that or what it was. But actually for a while there I was a little concerned something was trying to get after my food bag because I kept hearing banging and thumping. But it was there in the morning. And so everything's good. Gonna get some water and then uh, get moving. All right, it's a little later than I'd hoped getting out of here. Kinda wanted to get moving because I knew there was going to be a very exposed stretch and I wanted to get out there before it got too hot. But uh, forgot to shut off my inReach and charge it last night and it was pretty close to dead this morning, so I kinda had to just hang out and stick around for a little while and let it charge up. The goal today is to aim for a horseshoe bend, which is another 14, 15 nautical miles up the trail, and that'll put me right on track for finishing up the next day.
some of these campsites are pretty fancy. That was Inspiration Point. If you're wondering, that is probably some of the steepest drop-offs that you're going to see on the Rogue River Trail. I remember the first time we came through here, we were kind of wondering about that because uh, we hadn't really done a lot of this type of hiking and weren't sure how we'd do with the heights. Turns out it's not really a big deal. Um, you still have plenty of trail. There's very few places on this trail where you're very like clinging to the side and it's usually where there's been a slide. We've just hit the Mariel Trailhead. There's probably about half a mile or so of road walking from here to connect to the other part of the trail. So Rock River Ranch is kind of the borderline between the Forest Service side, which is on the west, and the BLM side, which is on the east. Unfortunately, it was closed for the season, so I couldn't actually go down there and like check it out for you. But fortunately, the last time we did this hike, I took some video, and I think that footage actually made it. So I'll go ahead and share that now. One of the biggest hazards on the Rogue River Trail is all of the poison oak. It really is everywhere, not just on the side of the hills and stuff, but it actually grows into the trail, especially the trails that go down to some of the campsites. So keep your eyes open and uh, make sure that you're not stepping in it or you're going to have a bad time. Other issues that you can run into, ticks are sometimes bad out here. 
I have had them crawling on my legs before. I've never actually had one attached. But you're always gonna wanna check yourself for ticks every night. Bears are definitely an issue, not so much on the trail, but at nighttime, especially in the west side of the trail in the National Forest area, because uh, they will raid your food if it's not stored properly. So you always wanna make sure that you're properly hanging your food or carrying a bear vault or whatever type of canister you wanna use, because they will come visit. Other issues, there are rattlesnakes out here. I've had one rattle at me once, but I was never able to actually find it. I was actually kind of disappointed about it because at that point I hadn't done the PCT and I'd never seen one, and I was really kind of hoping to see one. But make sure that you're keeping your eye out on the trail and you'll be fine. One of my goals out here was to try and get an 18 mile day in because that's really the pace we need to set on the PCT to get the stretch done that we want to do. I'm pretty close. I think I might get close to 18 today, but I'm beat. So looks like I need to do some more training. So we managed to make it to Horseshoe Bend. That pretty much puts me with two-thirds of the trail done. I've got actually only about 11 miles left to do out of the 40, and hopefully I will finish up tomorrow afternoon. I'll see you in the morning. Whew, that was a climb up from the water. Got about 11 miles to go. Thankfully most of it's downhill. Keep a thorough grip on your water bottles.
think it's kind of funny. The first time I hiked this trail, I hid this part in the rain. And today, it's raining again. That was kind of part of why I wanted to go for a three day hike is because it's supposed to get progressively more rainy as the day turns, it goes on. But it was a good hike. I'm probably about half a mile from the trailhead. Yay, I can see the outhouses of the trail. Well, that pretty much does it for the through hike. I was 40 miles over like two and a half days. It was a good little hike. But right now I'm really looking forward to uh, going and getting a pizza and some beer. Getting down these stairs, these rocks. But anyway, I wanted to thank everyone for following along. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more content, hit that subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.